Hey folks, welcome on in. Storm here with another model for you guys. This week we're doing Rogue from X-Men. Continuing on my journey with 3D printing, I just found this beautiful Rogue model, which I thought just was a nice, uh, nice touch from the Marvel series, right? So we're going to start with this base. We're going to prime everything. And we're going to prime it in a nice black color. And why do we do black? Well, because it gives us an even uh, like background to paint all of our colors onto. So we're going to go through and paint our base, paint um, all of our individual parts black. That way everything is unified and we can look for any defects or um, any, any kind of issues we had from our print. Because sometimes with the supports and whatnot, you'll get these, these little uh, either... Uh, impressions or extra bits that you have to clean up and sand down so giving in a base coat is always a good way of again unifying everything and checking for those defects now we're gonna move on to the base okay I like to build these from the bottom up just because it makes me feel like I'm making some progress rather than just everything coming together at the end so we're gonna start by dry brushing and I actually found this cool trick with a, a big uh, makeup brush for larger bases like this so we're gonna start with a chipping color um, just like from our armor models this is a nice dark reddish brownish chipping color and then we're gonna go over with another dry brush this one here is obviously one of my ammo dry brushes and we're gonna do a nice gray this is just a medium gray color to bring out those highlight details okay and again we use a smaller brush because we got to get into those cracks and crevices to bring out those details which again they're beautifully sculpted on this model I mean it's just gorgeous and the last step is to take a sandy color uh, again all diode dry brush you can see in the background beautiful color absolutely wonderful details and it really makes this base pop and it's just a rock it's just a big beautiful old rock but it looks gorgeous when we do all that dry brushing and then look at the details on this model that's why I love it look at the details on Rogue's jacket on her her shirt I mean you can see even cracks and crevices in the leather I mean this model is just so beautifully sculpted so at this point I want to show you guys a trick that I learned with zenithal for yellows okay so the shadow of a yellow is not dark yellow it's actually like an orangish color so we're gonna start by painting the yellow parts of rogues um, outfit in pink okay so um, again, we have to do a zenithal, but we're going to do a base coat of pink over all the parts that are going to be yellow. Okay. So again, I know we base coat everything black for primer, but we're going to do it in pink. Then we're going to come over it with a white zenithal. This is just like we're used to doing on our figures um, and models. Um, but again, we're doing the zenithal over the pink. And what you're going to see is this magic trick when you paint over this color this this color combination of the white zenithal and the pink base you get all of your yellow shadows I mean it's, it's an absolute magic trick and I'm gonna show you that here in just a second using this wonderful transparent yellow by Vallejo um, it, it just this is it's magic you paint the yellow over the pink and the white zenithal and you get orange you get orange over the pink I mean it literally gives you the orange shadows when I first saw this, I was like, wow, that's amazing. Look at these boots. I was so blown away with how each one of those crevices in the boots, you just get these beautiful, natural yellow shadows of the orange. Again, this is just like magic to me because, again, I'm an armor modeler, so this is somewhat new to me getting into uh, all these colors. I'm, I'm used to greens, browns, and blacks, and now here we are with these beautiful yellows. Now... Moving on to the green part, I did use some uh, putty masking uh, that you guys have seen me use on my Tritone tanks um, on the yellow part just to protect it. And we're going over with this transparent green over the remainder of the zenithal and also the details like these straps on her boots. And again, I'm really shocked by these transparent colors. They're so vibrant um, and they really work well with the zenithal. So if you, if you don't have a set of transparent paints, now whether it's Vallejo brand or like Citadel's contrast paints, which are also uh, very much so uh, transparent, uh, definitely definitely look at adding that to your collection of paints because these just bring out such a beautiful, beautiful color. 
So once we take the masking off, we can see what we're left with is just this um, awesome yellow with bright green. Again, I, I'm shocked by transparent colors being so vibrant. Again, I've used transparent colors in armor modeling before, but usually for like lights, like brake lights and things like that. So we take all of our ma ma masking putty off of the yellow bits and we can see how nice and good that looks. Just beautiful, beautiful colors. So we're gonna take a little bit of some metallic silver here and go over uh, the base. So I, again, I wanted to go from the base up. I didn't have this base done yet. So I wanted to uh, kind of do like a, a, a nice bright, again, I was trying to use uh, some more transparent colors and, and bring out like a bright metallic red. So I got this crystal red from ammo, thinking it might be like the transparent red from uh, Vallejo, just to test it out. And it actually turned very pink. And I think this is because of the bright silver I used underneath. And at first I thought, man, I really wanted this to be like a bright metallic red. But, hmm, well, you'll see why this actually fits Rogue really well here a little while. Um, the pink metallic actually fits Rogue's statue to a T. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go with it. So then uh, I, I took this gun metal to go over her buckles on her boots. Um, again, just li some little details here. Um, again, uh, just such a beautifully sculpted model. And uh, next step was to take some of this transparent orange and just go over some of the lines. Right, this is kind of like shadowing, just to bring out some of the the, the uh, seam lines on these boots. Again, beautifully, beautifully sculpted boots. And I wanted to attach these to my base. Now I did only actually attach the one to start. Um, that secured the one down because these legs you kind of have to finagle them into position um, just because of the way it sits on there so I was able to just get them lined up there um, and then I'm coming back over with some Vallejo black um, this is just just flat black um, slightly thin down to, to help it flow and I'm just going through all her details on her suit again it just turns out so beautiful again as an armor modeler i love the colors this is so colorful and i absolutely love it and i love all the details again the, gosh these these sculpts are so beautiful um so this is such a nice break for me uh for again from armor modeling not that i don't like it it's just i, I love it but it's just I, I don't know it's there's different uh techniques different movements evolved and you can see look at the precision we need to have doing those lines on her on her uh, shirt there so the next step here is I took some of this orc flesh which again this is the citadel paints I've been I've been playing with and again it's a contrast paint but out of the airbrush it's like a translucent paint and it just gives it a nice shadow in those crevices and uh, on her jacket and on her backside there um, and again on, on her arms as well we're just kind of blending this over top of the the darker areas and then I actually took that same orc flesh and painted it on the seam on her arm here that you can see um, again uh, I didn't want to paint this black or anything it's just a seam so I used that orc flesh it just really brings out that seam and then I went back over the details of her cuff with that same Vallejo black I used earlier so now we're gonna move on to the jacket we're actually gonna paint this uh, another armor color old rust um, again, you can use any brown color that is close to leather. Um, I just really like this color. Again, as an armor modeler, I think it's fun to bring these armor uh, colors onto these model figures, and it just, it just looks really good. So again, uh, we can see all the details on, on these leather. The folds are beautiful. This jacket, again, it's just such a beautiful sculpt on a 3D print. And then uh, after we do the jacket, we're going to also get the, the belts because those are the same color as well. A nice uh, leather brown color and then from there I wanted to do some of the detail painting on the belt to get that done remember I was saying I want to work from the bottom up and I want to get these belts done uh, and again it's just taking some Vallejo black over those details and here we can see the X-Men belt buckle giving it a black background then we're gonna come over with white over top of the X itself and that's because you don't really want to paint red over top of brown and you really won't see it and then I actually took just a, a I think this was just red like um, actually ammo by MIG red over top of that and then I just used the same exact technique on the shoulders uh, everywhere else where there was the X-Men logo which I actually think I counted there was um, five or six X-Men logos on her jacket in total between the shoulders like there you can see the button and I think there were actually two more on the top of the jacket itself 
um, on the shoulders. So uh, coming back with the, a darker brown contrast paint. Again, you guys saw me use this back on my Viking model. Um, using this over the belt, just trying to add some contrast to the uh, jacket itself. Right, we don't want the belt to blend in with the jacket or else that would be boring. So we're going to add some more depth, uh, make this belt a little bit darker. And again, it's just, it really makes the belt pop. It's just such a beautiful little um, addition. And also, we're going to use this on the inside of the jacket. Again, add more color contrast. So the inside of the jacket's this nice dark uh, brown color. And it's just, it's just really beautiful. And again, you can see how easily it just flows off of the brush. It really works well. And then I went over the jacket with this uh, shader, which is actually um, very similar to our washes that we use in armor modeling, but it's a very light brown. And I'm spraying it from my airbrush just because I want to add a little bit of visual contrast in these seam areas, shadow areas. Um, again, uh, just trying to add some more visual texture to the model here and then at this point we're ready to attach the arms so uh, you can see I did super glue everything I didn't use magnets um, I, I've learned about using magnets magnets I just haven't done it yet um, but again we're attaching all the arms and her hand that's holding the, her glove and then the next step is to actually paint this card that she kind of has on this pinkish uh, fire magic so I just used a translucent pink over top of this card I actually did paint this in clear resin um, and then the next step, I just took some white. Um, I think this was actually satin white, and then I switched over to another, a thicker version of white just because it was taking so long. Um, and I layered on the white over time. It took quite a few coats to get it to just, you know, look like a card. And then I actually painted on um, the, uh, the spade here. So I practiced a little bit ahead of time. I'm not going to lie because this isn't something I think I, I'm that all, all that great at um, freehand, but... Uh, I think this is one of the first times I've ever freehand painted um, any kind of you know lettering and whatnot. So yeah, we actually uh, I was able to um, make the Ace of Spades uh, freehand uh, again, just using Vallejo black uh, here that was slightly thinned down so it would flow. I, I was pretty happy with that. So moving on to the flesh, uh, so you can see what I do first is I do a pink zenithal over top of the skin. Uh, over top of the, the hand in this case because she only has two uh, flesh areas which is her hand and her face um, so again we're just doing a, a pink zenithal from the top um, and again you guys will recognize this process from my viking video if you didn't see that I'll make sure I have a link somewhere in here so again uh, we're doing pink zenithal from the top and then we come in with a transparent red from the bottom and what this does is um, we're going to cover up the black from our primer and it's actually going to create like this beautiful like deep red on the bottom where the black was and it actually turns the gradient in between the pink and the black to like a purplish color so we get a nice natural base color that's natural for flesh right that's we're red and purple and everything else right so i'm going to use this color set from left to right okay that's why i have all four of them up here to show you all the ones i use from left to right so we're going to start with the natural flesh and again we're coming in from the top so again, I treat the flesh, pretty much paint it like a zenithal the whole time. So with the natural flesh, I want to get a little bit more coverage from the top. But again, you can see I'm always painting in one direction. Um, I might tilt the uh, part a little bit um, just to get more coverage with natural flesh. But then I come back over with fairy flesh and I, I, I narrow my cone, if you will. So we get a little less coverage with the fairy flesh. And then again, with the highlights, we're just hitting those really high, you know, raised areas you know areas at the that are the closest to our light which is the top and then we come back with this medium flesh and we're going to do this from a, like a reverse zenithal we're going to come up from the bottom and we're going to create the gradient between those dark reds from our transparent red to our flesh tones and it just really really works i mean this is just a, such a simple method uh using just an airbrush and you don't get tide marks or anything else it's just such a beautiful way of doing flesh and i highly recommend you practicing it because it is so easy and so great so again we're adding the card to our model and you can see this thing is slowly coming together so again bringing more of the armor world into this model i used some masking putty to cover up those beautiful flesh tones we just did and i'm using dark tracks over her hair i could have just used a similar brown color to her leather jacket but again i wanted more visual contrast and dark tracks is darker than uh, old rust 
Um, so you can see how it's almost a black, but again, it's a very dark brown. And then what I did was I took some lighter brown uh, colors and just did some dry brush highlights in her hair. Again, just to add some more visual texture and give some volume to her hair. Then I came back with some Vallejo Black, again, same as I've been using for details, and just painted in her eyes uh, to start, which kind of gives her that uh, her eye shadow, right? And then come back in with a, this just, I think this is actually like an off-white color, uh, just painting her eyes white. Um, again, in this case, we don't have to paint her pupils on, but you can see we're just going to give her a white, uh, white eye, and then we're going to come over with some transparent pink, and bring those white eyes to a glowing pink color uh, and it kind of you almost get like an OSL out of it too right object source lighting which just looks so good and this is really the last step before putting her head on and enjoying this beautiful reveal Thank you all so much for hanging in there to the end. I hope you enjoyed this reveal, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider giving me a like and subscribe to see more content. I got so many models for you.